welcome back to the channel and welcome to the last video in this series, Summer with Craft. We have gone through all kinds of content. There's over an hour of content all about craft. You can find that in the link below. I'll link back to a playlist that has all that in it. Um, today, I wanna share two things that are really exciting and I hope will kind of help solidify this series and push you into the future of note taking. And one of those is that there are now tables in craft. <laughs> When I started this series, I was hopeful that I would be able to finish it with tables and uh, thank you craft people for making that happen. Um, I know you didn't do it for me, but I'm still grateful nonetheless that tables are here in craft. So I want to show you tables today and I want to talk about craft and note taking in the long term. So let's jump into craft here for just a few minutes and I want to show you a few different things that I've been thinking about. What does it look like to have a long term plan in craft? Um, or any note taking app. I think the main thing is to say, what is your goal? What is your goal in your note taking system? Is it to be a catch all? Is it to be a curated thing? Is it to be, well, I don't know, what is your goal? It's important to ask that question when you're considering using an application, um, whether it's Craft or Notion or Evernote or Obsidian or Rome or Notes or a piece of paper, <laughs> bullet journal method, whatever you're doing, it's important that you decide what you want to do with that content. So what's your goal with a note-taking app? How are you going to use it daily, weekly, monthly, yearly? What does that look like for you? We've talked a lot in this series about how to use Craft, how to navigate and keyboard shortcuts and how things are organized and the hierarchy all those kind of things ultimately don't mean as much if you don't have a plan for them. So just because an app has a lot of features doesn't mean that it is good for you. So here's what I want to do as we close out the series. I want to look through a couple questions about what makes an app or a system good, and then we'll look at tables. So let's go through this first, though. What makes a system good, right? You hear people talk about, oh, this is the system you need. This is what you need. I've spent um, over an hour of time convincing you that craft is a good solution for you. But what does that mean? Well, here's a few things that I think about. Number one, ease of use, right? How, how easy is it to use something like craft? Uh, well, craft is really easy, right? How quickly can you start a note? I just hit command N and I can start a new note. And I can start typing right away. And I can add a list. Um, I can turn this into a to-do list, right? I'm instantly just going, going, going on the go. That is so, so fast. So Craft allows me to quickly create those uh, opportunities. How many barriers exist to get a thought out of your head? With Craft, not many, right? Anywhere in the app, I can start a new note anywhere I can save something to craft with a share sheet extension. That's part of the beauty of it being like an iOS, Mac OS program. Another question to ask is what kind of features does this app have? What are those critical features? What is crucial? Is this app being developed? Is there a team that's invested in that app? For Craft, that is a resounding yes. There's an incredible team of people making this app happen on a regular, regular basis. Other apps, not so much, right? That was some of the problem with Evernote back a few years ago is they seem to be doing other things and investing in business and other enterprise ventures that were hurting customers. Craft for me has been super good with features. Everything that's critical is there, and there's incredible update cycles. Almost every couple weeks, they're putting out a decent update, and then really once a month, there's been a substantial update. If we look back at the beginning of like getting started with Craft, episode zero of the series, we've added so many things, uh, including like all of daily notes and now tables and so many other features that they've added, which is just incredible. Um, so yeah, features. What features are you looking for? And then... Um, it, is it the right tool when you need it, right? How does the app work? How does it flow? What does it make you think about when you're using this app? Does it make you happy? Does it make you sad? Does it, does it work the way you want it to, or is there friction? I think for me with craft, it's really easy to just look at documents that I have. I have this kind of, uh, dummy system opened up here. Um, but it's easy to just find what I'm looking for. If I want to start a note, then I go, look, and there it is and start. I can easily make folders and resources and all that kind of stuff just so, so fast. The next thing would be the, the sticky factor, right? Is this something that you can stick with? Is there something about this app that makes it 
stick with you, whether that's the design or the feel or the flow or how it makes you feel inside. Is it something you're going to use? Because if you're not going to use the app, there's no reason to use the app. Another thought would be just the design and the aesthetic. Is it pleasing to use? Is it pleasant? Uh, do you enjoy using it? Does it fit in the ecosystem that you're in? Uh, for me, I'm in the Apple ecosystem all the way. That's really all that I use. Ancraft has a web version, but I don't have an Android phone. I don't have a Windows computer, so that doesn't matter to me. What matters is uh, something that feels at home on my Mac, on my iPhone, on my iPad, wherever I need it. Craft fits the bill for that as well. Those are just a few things to think about when we think about what makes a good app, right? Is it good for me? Is Craft good for you? Ultimately, I don't care what app you use. You can do whatever you want. But I do want you to have somewhere to put your notes and put your content that's like safe and secure and is going to help you find what you're looking for. And in that vein of thinking, let's talk about tables. Um, I, I found this photo of a table, so uh, but that's not the kind of table we're looking at today, is it? These are the tables that we're looking for. And I am going to uh, pull this up here so you can see my whole screen. Let's talk about tables. How do you make a table? Well, of course, in Craft, it's super easy. All you need to do is hit that slash button, and we can either type table, or we can just start typing what we want. A two by two, three by three, four by four, five by five. There's a six by six. Look at that big table right now. This is very similar to tables that you have used in Excel or any other program in the past. Um, it's really simple, but it is really powerful. So let me walk you through a few things that you can do inside of tables. And um, here's some notes from Craft. Here's some release notes. Uh, you can see here that they have... Um, a note that they created to help work through these tables. There's the versions, release date, status, features. This is a helpful status board, so they're using tables to do that. Um, they also added this new feature here, and let me show you. Let me go back to my table, table page. Um, if you want to add a table, like if I want to come in here and add a table, I can also click the little plus button here, and they've, add, they've fixed these up, which is really, really nice now. I can just drag this in, and now there's a table, and I can just start typing. Hello, this is a table. Now, inside of these cells, you can see I've shaded these in, and you can click on these little three button menu, and you can go to style, and you can change the fill color. Easy peasy. You can also uh, collect more than one. So if you wanna select all these on the bottom, or all of these, or all of these, or all of these. Let's select these and let's change all these to a color. So we're gonna sell fill color and we'll do this one. Cool. You can also, um, let's make a table here. We'll make a four by four. And I wanna do this alternating thing. This is pretty cool. Alternating row color. I really like this. So if you want to make something kind of nice and flowy, kind of candy stripe vibe. It is really easy to do that. Again, I'm just clicking here to insert a row or I can hit command enter to make a new row as well. Um, I can also change the text color. So if I'm in here um, and we have a table, I can come in here and change the text color. So I'm going to style, text color. Let's make it green, super. That looks great. Um, so those are just some easy things like just formatting and style things you can do. Now, let's talk about some ways that we can use tables. I put a few things in here. Number one, you can link to your daily notes inside of a table. So let's say that we made, let's just kind of do this on the fly. We're gonna make this table um, all about uh, the date and we're gonna put big idea here. I can't type today. And so if I go here and I hit today, it's going to add a link to my note in my today view. So if I go here to my daily notes, you can see I have three links inside of tables to today. Um, so there it is right there. And then if I had a big idea for the day, it would be um, record video for my summer with craft 
series. Look at that. Now, here's another helpful tip. You can adjust the, the width and the height just like any other thing. Now, there's my big idea for the day. And then I could say status, yes or no. So, yeah, I did it. Good job. I could even say, you know what? This cell is going to be green now because green is go. It is done. Um, so each day you could come and make a status board, right? Or you can link to documents that you already have. So you could link to um, something that is inside of here, right? So today I want to record the video and I wanted to use this note that we're in right now to talk about long-term planning. Just did that. Worked out great. Again, I hope you can see what's happening here. So some real world examples, uh, a project database, a hub for something, meeting notes, agenda, daily notes. Um, you could do something like this, right? You could make projects that you're working on. So I'm recording Summer with Craft, episode five. That's what I'm doing right now. It's a high priority. I'm going to change this cell color to, um, to orange. I think it's orange. Um, this is a high priority. Here's a document that I'm working on. Is it done? No, it's not. But will it be done soon? Yes, it will be. And then I could say, um, next video, new series. So if I'm starting a new series, uh, this would be maybe a medium priority. And I could make a new document called new craft series. And now there we go. So I could come back to this place often to find what I'm looking for, which is just super easy and really, really helpful. I love these tables. I think it's a great idea. Um, I love the status board idea. I'm definitely going to use that. Um, I love the new way that you could just drag and drop these. And then on iOS, if you use the little plus button, you can add a table right here. They've got a screenshot of that. Just like you can add a photo or uh, make a sketch or something like that, you can now add a table. To me, this is a perfect feature and Craft has done it in the most crafty way. Easy, but functional and powerful and it looks really nice. And I am so excited about using tables I hope that this series was helpful for you. I hope that Summer with Craft has been a fun journey. Uh, it is fall now. It is October as I'm recording this video, and uh, it's time for something else. There's more content coming about creativity and productivity, and of course, craft is the backbone for all of that. I've been producing some shorts as well on YouTube. You can check those out with some little quick 10 and 20 second tips from these videos. Uh, I hope all this content is helpful. I hope we can continue. I've got some exciting things cooking up that we're going to be doing in the next few weeks that uh, hopefully will include some feedback from people and get you engaged in this stuff, in this productivity space. Um, but I just want to say thank you for all of you who watch these videos. This was my first sort of foray into YouTube content, and you all have been incredibly encouraging and inspiring and helpful to me to continue to do this, even though summer has been crazy with COVID and several losses of family members, and there's been so much heartache. Uh, it's honestly been fun to sit down and think through this content and try to provide something meaningful for a change in the world that is crazy right now. So thank you for checking out these videos. Thank Thank you for being a part of this journey. More to come. Thank you to the craft team for making tables. Thanks for watching Summer with Craft. We'll see you on the next series.